Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm changing my show name from That's Good Sports to the Antonio Brown 24-Hour News Network, Perna. And that is still a better name than what Washington actually landed on for their name this season. The saddest ball catcher in NFL history. It takes a, it takes a lot, but I can... Uh... <laughs> No, no, no. Antonio Brown is trying to get back into the league after officially being done with the league a few days ago. Uh, unlike others, I hope he never plays, and I will have the balls to explain why today. Plus, the Bills Ed Oliver's DWI charges have been dropped after his own blood cleared him, and I will reveal which NFL fan bases dropped the most F-bombs in 2020. A very important story. Let's get it, sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel for football news videos. Uh, tonight is our Patreon Zoom conference call for all of you Patreon, $5 and above patrons. Don't forget, and I do have big dick Patreon shout outs for Isaac, negative 088, Fabian Meyer, Brian Pyrittle, Golden Taint, Logan Whitmore, Flutter Shy is best. Pony, C Dash Thig, who I have an announcement about in a second, Nerd Fiction, Blue Ridge Mountain Plum, no, wait, it's Kalapawe Market in Oahu, Patrick Mahomes banged my girlfriend and she came back a whole cup size bigger, Perna Poontang Patrol 2020, Bobby Hart, Joe, Ray Lewis murdered two Broncos team's hopes on his way to both Super Bowl wins, Davis. Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing now at 135 freaking dollars. Now, Seethig uh, sent me a message on Patreon asking to promote a GoFundMe for his cousin who was shot in the face by a shotgun during a robbery. This is probably the only time I'll make an exception to promote a GoFundMe. Colin's cousin definitely gets a big dick survivor shout out and has a great family trying to support him and the steep medical bills they are currently facing. So I put the link in the description for anyone interested in supporting. No pressure, but I appreciate your message. See Thig and wish your family all of the best and your cousin a speedy recovery. Look, I thought I was gonna be done with Washington for a while in the last episode, but the Washington football team has a new name and it is the Washington football team. For now, at least. Until they can decide on a permanent name, they will be known in their generic form. I would prefer they go by the Washington team of football, if only for the WTF acronym showing up on scoreboards and tickers, but then they might have a, a copyright issue with Mark Marin, so who the fuck knows? According to our friend Adam Schefter, the washballs, as I will call them to save time, are taking the Redskin logo off of the side of their helmets and replacing it with the player's numbers. And in this very underwhelming uniform reveal, you can see they look exactly like they did before, but without the logos, just like you would expect except for some reason, they now play football on a fucking soccer field. <laughs> oh, the washballs. No matter how much soap you use, we'll never come clean. The Washington wipes, because we've always got a mess to clean up. Now, Dan Snyder gave up on finding a new name. This is a billionaire who has had two decades to think about this situation with all of the resources anyone could imagine, and this is too hard for him. He can force executives to do cartwheels for his amusement, but getting a new name and logo for the 2020 season was outside of his capabilities as a team owner. This is the most pathetic thing I have ever seen in sports, and that includes my sixth grade football highlight reel. I mean, LeBron James is roasting the Washington football team on Twitter. The good news is you can still buy Washington's shitty merch. If you think this Washington football team will be a collector's item one day, you're wrong. You cannot make garbage a collector's item. 
Now I do love that Dan Snyder gave up the day the NHL announced that the Seattle Kraken will be the newest NHL franchise. Their logo, extremely average, made worse by a chart explaining the anatomy of the logo, but the name, the Seattle Kraken, is very badass. Suck it, Snyder. Release the Kraken, yep, and I get it cracking. Motherfuckers better run when I enter the dragon. Now, if you recall, Bill's 2019 first round draft pick, Ed Oliver, was arrested in Houston back in May for a DWI when he was pulled over and had an open beer can between his legs. Now, it wasn't a big story at the time because other NFL players were doing some armed robberies over a Madden tournament. Gone wrong. Well, I have some good news as Ed Oliver has had all of the charges against him dropped. The officers at the scene said Oliver failed a field sobriety test, suspected he had something in his system other than alcohol, and charged him with unlawfully carrying a firearm in Texas. That's like getting charged with eating too much vegan food in Boulder, Colorado. Now. Oliver's blood work came back totally clean, totally negative, and the gun charges were then dismissed because it's only illegal to have a pistol in Texas if the driver of the car is drunk or charged with another crime. This is obviously great news for Ed Oliver and the Buffalo Bills. It just shows how different state laws, hell city laws, can vary. Ed should have known driving with an open beer can is only mandated in Buffalo and frowned upon literally everywhere else except for maybe parts of Florida. Now, as a low-key Bills fan, I was on Ed Oliver's side until he took to Twitter to shit on people who are five foot eight when he tweeted about the incident. He said, now y'all go back and read this article knowing that all my blood work came back clean, but I had a beer can between my legs. Get the fuck out of here. How does a five foot eight officer see inside a window above his head anyway? How do five cops show up before I take a sobriety test? Huh? Five cops showed up because you're a big motherfucking dude, Ed. Also probably because they're racist. But let's focus on how you blatantly just discriminated against men of stature being five foot eight. Do we not bleed too, Ed? Do we not sometimes surprise the world and be great at football like a Darren Sproles, Ed? Your words hurt, Ed. And we, we can reach almost all of the shelves in kitchen cabinets. We can see into trucks, Ed, unless it's lifted. Oh shit, yeah, your truck was lifted to super duty. Yeah, we can, we can definitely not see inside of that truck. You got swindled, Ed. Next time, keep the beer can closed and shove it inside of your pants so people think you have a very thick penis. That's something a five foot eight man will ultimately understand. That's something he will salute you for doing. Not that I've ever done it. Staying with the Bills for a minute, New Era Field wants out of its naming rights with the Buffalo Bills. Good, because that name's boring. The Bills deserve something more on brand. So here are my top five companies that should buy the naming rights to the Bills Stadium. Number five, Dildo Superstore at Jim Kelly Field. Number four, Ford Pinto. That's it. Number three, Stoli Vodka. Number two, Buffalo Wild Wings with a shot of Stoli Vodka Field. And number one, Costco Folding Tables. The ultimate on brand team stadium name sponsor. And Dan Snyder can't even think of a name. Pick any animal that starts with a W, Dan. The wombats, the walruses, although you would need Andy Reid to be your head coach, the wolverines, the warthogs. It is so easy. Now, when Trey Parker and Matt Stone wrote about intersports play in their magnum opus, that is basketball, this is not what they had in mind. Here's Brandon McManus, Broncos kicker, taking the most boring part of football, kickoffs, and mixing it with the most boring sport to watch, golf. That is the most critical I will ever be of the Gooch Slayer himself, Brandon McManus. I feel bad saying what I just said, but I made an oath to Odin himself to always keep it real. Now the big story, again, after announcing slash vaguely threatening to retire while also promoting his album last week, Antonio Brown is asking the NFL to give him answers about when he can be reinstated. AB posted this on Instagram with the Roger Goodell video. 
I have complied with each and every ask of your investigations throughout the past 11 months. You have had access to all of my phones. You know what the deal is in each and every situation that the media has distorted. I have been seeing the therapist you asked me to. I have worked on all aspects of my life this past year and have become a better man because of it. The fact that you refuse to provide a deadline and the reason for the fact you won't resolve your investigations is completely unacceptable. I demand you provide me clarity on this situation immediately if you really care about my well-being. My legal team continues to ask and you provide no answers. How is it that the league can just drag its feet on any investigation it chooses on players and we just have to sit there in limbo? Need an update so I can talk to these teams properly. They're waiting on you at NFL. Let's get this thing moving. We've got history to make. Hashtag Timothy. If you hashtag your new album during a rant about how a rape investigation is taking too long, you are only Antonio Brown. Even Kanye West was like, bro, that is not how you promote the release of your music, dude. Now here's why I personally don't give a shit how long the NFL takes to investigate Antonio Brown. It's because they are investigating sexual assault and rape claims. That's a case you want to get right. If Antonio Brown is innocent of those accusations, then it sucks that he has to go through all of this. But let's not pretend like he didn't make this situation worse every single chance he got. Pat McAfee, who is probably my favorite football talker next to the man I see in the mirror every morning, sort of defended Antonio Brown and his frustration with the investigation on his show today. He even tweeted at him to what I assume is to gain favor with one of the most careless guys I have ever watched in sports. Now Pat in no way defended what Antonio Brown has been accused of, but he sympathized with him. I'm sorry if I don't care if the NFL takes too long to determine if he's a rapist during a global pandemic when they don't even really know how to make football happen. The only job on earth you can have where you can make as many mistakes at the magnitude Antonio Brown has is politician. Antonio Brown has been a terrible person for close to two straight years, which doesn't even factor in the sexual assaults. He doesn't deserve a job, and we're now supposed to give him another chance to make millions of dollars because he's been quiet for a few months? Fuck off. I'm so tired of seeing people who act like dirtbags over and over and over and over again get rewarded. The list of people wronged by Antonio Brown could fill an entire football roster called Scorned by Antonio Brown, the football team. So forgive me if I don't believe that he didn't sexually assault a woman. We know he threatened her during the investigation because he was dumb enough to loop in his lawyers and his text threats. But go ahead, Pat, sympathize him for having to wait 11 months for an NFL rape investigation. That said, you ever want to collaborate? My door is open, Pat. Now, a few days ago, NFL Reddit had a post from Maps Are Cool, which ranked fan bases using the F word the most in 2019. I believe these are just from Reddit comments, which featured 7 million fan comments that they got these numbers from. Regardless, Maps Are Cool is officially the patron saint of fucks. Jaguar fans said the fuck word the fewest times, just 53.55 fucks per thousand. Ravens fans had the second fewest per thousand at 53.59, even though they had more than four times the amount of fucks used overall than the Jaguars. The top 10 teams in order from 10 to one were the fucking Falcons, the fucking Chargers, the fucking Vikings, the fucking Panthers, the fucking Eagles, the fucking Rams, the fucking Browns, the fucking Raiders, the fucking Lions, and my number one, Denver Broncos, fuck yes. I like to think I accounted for about 17% of the overall fucks used. And never, never have I been so proud of a team that finished with a losing record. One question I had was, how many of these fucks between Broncos and Raiders fans were just them yelling fucks at each other as they both finished in the top five? Maybe we're more alike than we thought, Raiders fans. What I wanna know is how many of these fucks are being used in noun form versus fucks as verbs, as in fuck the Raiders or 
who the fuck wants to watch the fucking Raiders this year? Those are the fucking questions I want fucking answered fucking immediately. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe, you're on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna, if you care to follow me on those socials.